Hello. Hey, there you hey. are. <laughs> it How's worked. It Good. How are you? Oh, you froze. Do you guys uh -oh. have really bad Wi-Fi, or is that just? We live in a basement there? suite, so uh, yeah. Better. Is the is the Wi-Fi good in your basement suite? No. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> is that better though? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna. Do you want me to keep the comment the comments on? Hi everybody. Yeah. It's good to see everybody who's here. That's uh, this fine. Is, this is. Uh, your actual name is Rebecca Orozco. Yeah, yeah. But you go by Becca. Yeah. Yeah. Only my husband calls me Rebecca. I don't know why. Well, he wants to have something special. You you are married to? To Freddie. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, Freddie. Yeah. Oh, Freddie. Freddie yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's the one who causes yeah. a lot of trouble at the church, Freddie. In right? Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You, guys, you, you would know better than me, Jeff. Guys, oh, I know. He's a pain. So yeah. Freddie is your husband, but you are you are a nurse, and that's why mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you is because of your nursing background. But before we even get into any of that, uh, I wanted to say, or I wanted to ask you some questions about you. I also have a whole bunch right. of questions of what, like, what's it like to be a? Are you enjoying young married life, and what is it like to be stuck in a house with Freddie all the time? and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna run through a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> I see then, the real listen, reason you wanted me minutes, here, so. In a few minutes, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do an anatomy quiz, cause you're a nurse and I just wanna make sure. Oh no. You, like we can trust you. <laughs> you go ahead, okay. I'll do my best. All right, your Wi-Fi is horrible. Is, it, okay. is the Wi-Fi good? Let me see if I can find a better spot. No, it's terrible. This sounds good. Any is that any better? You have, you, I don't know. Sure. What I thought you did? I thought you lived in like a like an apartment somewhere. No, a basement suite. We it's my husband works at your church, Jeff. My husband works at a church yeah, as a pastoral intern. <laughs> can I tell you? I try my best not to pay attention to anything about <laughs> his life. So there's a lot of this is going to be new information for me. Okay, everybody, we're gonna have to be patient with Becca, with Becca's, uh, with her Wi-Fi. So it's no big deal. We'll we'll work through this. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, I my question is, wh where where are you from? What's your are you Alberta. from uh, the Lower Mainland? No, I grew up in Alberta. I was uh, born out in Lethbridge, outside of Lethbridge. I grew up on a farm. Okay, a farm. Hey, hang on one so sec. I'm gonna see if I can get the Wi-Fi better. One minute. Oh. Okay, let's try that. Just, there. Does Freddie know anything about the Wi-Fi, or are you just borrowing no. the upstairs neighbor's Wi-Fi? Is that how it works? We borrow our upstairs upstairs neighbors. All right. Is that any better? Sure. We'll do okay. it. No. We can see right. your face anyway. It's so okay. it's better that way. Um, so you're from. How did you end up uh, out here then? If you're from Lethbridge, Alberta. Mm hmm. So after high school, I wanted to go to a Bible college, and so literally, I think it was August. I googled Bible colleges in Canada, and by like four weeks later, I had moved to Abbotsford, and I did uh, like most of a degree at CBC. Okay, so yeah. you did, but why did you be, choose to become a nurse? Or when did you become a nurse? So actually, I didn't do very well in high school. So I first became a bit of a hairdresser. And then I thought, well, I might as well go to Bible school. It's something to pass the time. And then at Bible school, I had some very uh, key instructors who taught me that I was very capable of learning. And so then I thought, well, I should go into nursing. I can learn. So I did. <laughs> So Bible school was a stepping stone for you to become a nurse. That's awesome. It's not bad to say. <laughs> no, it's great. How long have you how long have you been a nurse then? Yeah. Uh we did oh you're you're stuck again. Oh, say it again. Two years. Is that better? <laughs>
This is awesome. I'm just uh, going to keep it around yeah. this week oh, I until can, I can find a hot spot. I can spot. see your face. <laughs> okay. Just go upstairs and go upstairs to your neighbor's house. I don't think or they'd they, like that they very food? much. Oh, whatever. <laughs> they don't know. They're probably not even, well, they probably are home, actually. Um, so, listen, where do you work? I work at Chilliwack Hospital in Chilliwack obviously in the emergency department yes so this means that you uh you are on the front lines with all of this covid stuff yes oh say it again we we cut, oh, you cut out no. um yes i am i'm on the very front lines although chilliwack is um uh, uh, liam was on here last week and much like Aaliyah said our two communities have been pretty spared from like the worst of the COVID. Good. Are you, you are seeing some patients though? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so you have to get all geared up and stuff and wash mm -hmm. every part of yourself when you get home. Yes. Yeah. We, um, we wear hospital scrubs now. I, I'm not allowed to wear my, uh, well, actually we are allowed to, but they don't recommend it. But so I can't wear my own scrubs. We wear hospital scrubs and I wear like a scrub cap, keep all the COVID out of my hair and uh, goggles for 12 hours. For 12 hours, <laughs> holy smokes. Are you enjoying, I mean, is, are, are you, is this different now than it's been before or is it um, basically similar? Yeah, to be honest, we, it, our, our risk is higher because we're working with obviously a high risk um, disease or virus, I should say, but our, um, like the amount of people who come to the emerge is actually down. Like our census is down by 60%. So we're actually seeing 40% less patients than we typically would. Yeah. Wow. It's because everyone's staying home. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, emergency is notorious for being visited by people who don't actually need emergency. Like they, they treat it maybe as a walk-in clinic sometimes, which is fair enough with our medical system and everything. Um, but with the COVID, nobody wants to be exposed. And so our usage is much actually down from what it was. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. But, uh, are you, do you, are you worried at all? Do you get worried at all? And do you wor are the people you're working with worried at all about this? Yeah, people, you know, it's interesting. It depends who you talk to. Um, I Some people are going so far as to isolate from their spouses, which to me is just wild. Like that, no, no, that would not. be rough. Can I, I, can I just give you a piece of advice right now? You should isolate <laughs> from your spouse. I, I could I, never. This, no, 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 no. I know your spouse. We all know your spouse. <laughs> It's probably going to be best for everyone if you just put him alone in a room somewhere, okay? I could never. I could never, Jeff. <laughs> well, just consider yeah. it, all right? Just consider it. I'll think, okay. I'll think on it. I'll think on it. But some people are, like, yeah. some people are, okay. Mm -hmm. And so I think for people who are separating for their spouse, I mean, that's huge because there's no end date for this. So... Like to think about staying separate from your house for an in, or from your spouse for an indefinite amount of time is like wild. So, um, so people who are kind of on one extreme end are doing that, and then on the other end, there are people who are trying to just go about life as much as normal as they can. I mean, um, yeah, with all the pr protective equipment that they use, they're just um, hoping that that's working to protect them. Yeah. But it's uh, that's amazing to me, though, that there's less that there's less there. See, I, I've been reading way too much lately. And there's some theories uh -oh. that this whole thing kind of well, no, that on the West Coast of the United States and here in D.C., that we, there was a big spike in flu like uh, stuff that happened in, in February and in early March. And so there's a bunch of people who are thinking, oh, Actually, maybe we've already been hit with it. In fact, that's one of the big things Stanford mm -hmm. University is doing studies on this. So I'm hoping that's the case because that would be yeah. really great because that would mean that it's more of us have yeah. had it, more of us have the antibodies and stuff. But I mean, who who knows? We're doing what the government mm -hmm. says, and that's, pro that's probably good. And yeah. also, I imagine because people are staying home, they're not like 
there's no need for them to be in the ER. You're not seeing like car accidents or other stuff like that. Yeah, we only see true emergencies. So we're seeing what, you know, actually, um, what's sad is we're seeing a lot of overdoses and like addiction crisis, crises. Um, we see a lot of that in Emerge anyways, but it's interesting now that so many of our other patients are gone. We're kind of like left with, either true emergencies like cardiac stuff or um like yeah car accidents trauma like things like that although mostly minor um then the other half is is like addiction type issues or um overdoses lots of um people coming in with like uh suicidal thoughts and things like that so yeah it's so it's that, wild times why do you think that is what's your theory I think people are already lonely and broken. I mean, this virus has stripped people absolutely bare in, in a way that I don't think anything has before. I mean, if you look at people, I think the world goes around by money mostly for people. And, and that has just been taken from almost everybody, whether people are still like, even if people are still earning money, the way the economy is looking and all that, I think just has people terrified um, and that puts them into a spiral, but then that compounded with loneliness and not being able to see family or friends, uh, like not being able to physically touch people is huge. It's so funny. Us nurses get to work and, and we're like, we hold on to each other. Like we, we need the physical touch that we're missing from friends that you would see normally give them, a, I don't know, a half hug or whatever. So it's, I think that plays into it in a huge way too. The social distancing is hard for people. It's really hard. So. Yeah. And it's going to, it's supposed to go on for quite a few weeks. Right. And yeah. I think that we're, we're realizing that we're realizing things about ourselves that maybe we have not, it's not that we didn't know. It's just that we took for granted, like physical touch is an important part of our lives and seeing somebody yeah. face to face, and giving a hug or or you know touching someone's arm or whatever whatever the physicality of being human is a really big a big deal for us yeah. so is that is that what you like as a christian and you reflect on this as a christian who's in the nursing profession in the middle of this is that the biggest thing that you've been reflecting on or is there something else that you've been thinking about as a christian in all this yeah i mean i think for us i i want to echo what Aaliyah said last week is that um, God doesn't waste opportunity. And so just thinking on that, mostly for me, I've been thinking a lot about what this means for me with um, like the staff I'm working with, because we have this lull in our department and we're seeing so, um, so many less patients than we have in, in the past. That means a lot of us have a lot more downtime to engage with one another. And there's people who I haven't ever had personal conversations with who are sharing bits of their life that I like I'm, I'm shocked to hear and I'm shocked that they would trust me to share it with them. And so for me, I'm really trying to, I've been really reflective on um, capitalizing on conversations and trying to be a, a presence in, uh, in my workplace. I mean, um, nursing is like a emergency nursing is a tense and when we're busy, it often gets really clipped and the environment can be really cold and harsh in emergency. And so just to have this time to kind of turn things more relational and, um, and have really intentional conversations, that's been really neat and something that I'm, I'm trying to capitalize on really and try to share a little bit of Jesus with everyone. <laughs> Well, that's all. No, that's fantastic. I'm really thankful that God has you, uh, you know, in, in that vocation. And you're, as we say in theology, bringing the reign of Christ to bear there. I think it's, all, it's fantastic. I keep thinking that God uh, has, pla has placed uh, several Christian people on the front lines um, for just such a time as this, right? It's an opportunity to, to be a light and, a, and uh, provide a, a level of hope that maybe others don't necessarily have totally. yeah and it's cool to see those other christians to step forward in some boldness that i don't think was there before like there's a lot of i've discovered there's a lot of christians i work with and i had no i had no idea and so it's cool to see them kind of come out of the woodworks and realize hey this is an opportunity to really stand up um and be a beacon of hope for people so it's neat that's that's fantastic um, yeah. So, uh, 
have you enjoyed, like, generally speaking, have you enjoyed, how many years have you been doing nursing now? Two. Oh, so you kind of newish at it. I'm a, I am a baby nurse. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Good for you. Yeah. And to be thrust into Thank such you. a hard situation is amazing, right? Yeah, it's like, good. What? I, um, I just finished, I did some, uh, some specialty training to be an emergency nurse in November, where we covered actually a lot of stuff about like pandemics and whatnot. So I feel fresh, <laughs> but I feel like the information is just right there. So it's good. That's good. And so you've been married to Freddie for how long? Yes, Jeff. Uh, well, you know what, if, if I, I mean, I spent four or five days with Freddie and it felt like about 40 years. So <laughs> I don't know if I should answer that question. I don't know if I should answer that question in like what it feels like or what it actually is. So right, I right. Actually, I think actually you guys have been married for th th four years? Almost six. In August, it'll be six years. Oh. Yeah. No, oh, that's fantastic. Good for you. Yeah. That's great. And have you enjoyed have you enjoyed being a young married? And I have questions for you about like uh, uh, your experience in church as a young married. Did you find it difficult to transition into that life stage because all of your yeah. single friends don't want to have anything to do with you anymore? Well, kind of. Honestly, Freddie and I both kind of were a bit we were both loners because Freddie moved from the States. He's American. And I came from Alberta, although I had been at Bible college, but all of my friends at Bible college have moved away. So when Freddie and I got married and started going to Northview, we realized we actually had no friends that were couples. Most of our friends were either um, single, which is fine, or were just in different provinces and countries. So our solution was we went to Andy one day and said, hey, do you have any young married uh, couples that you know that we could be friends with and he said no but why don't you start a community group and um you can find some so we did <laughs> and we found a sweet group of friends that's great and so your community group is made up of people kind of in your life stage yeah yeah that's great and Fre uh freddie it leads it or is he like you guys together lead it we we together lead it yeah yeah we're um we're co-leaders. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. So if anybody's watching this, is it one of those community groups that you say, it's just us 10 and no more? Or are you, are you, do you welcome other people? So this is how, how it happened. We were doing the community group. I guess we did it for four years. And then I started full-time nursing, which made any scheduled events really difficult. So now our community group is, um, I think, actually, at one point, it was like 26 people. It was, it was quite big. But then uh, we've kind of, a few people have gone to different community groups and now we meet um, sporadically throughout the month. So before this COVID thing, we were trying to do dinner with the group twice a month and it wasn't like a regular interval. So we were a bit of an atypical community group because um, actually a lot of people in our community group were nurses and healthcare people. So trying to coordinate oh. schedules and be on a regular schedule was really tough. So yeah. Do you guys do Zoom calls? Are you guys doing the Zoom community group? Well, we tried our first Zoom call last week and we played some, or uh, we didn't, we used dinner party. We played some games, but honestly, it's tough because it's tough to hear people right. and talking over each other and the, um, you don't, I think and it's funny because I hear this from a lot of people. I don't think people um, realize how much you depend on your like, your body language and your mannerisms, your little side comments that you throw in here and there. So our group was, I think, a little thrown off because we're used to tossing. We're pretty, like, we we jest a lot. And so we're used to tossing comments back and forth and yeah. um, all that. But we couldn't do that on Zoom. And I think I think people are finding that Zoom calls, like community Zoom calls are tough because yeah. you well, take a are. whole element out. Well, I mean, yeah. even, even, even yeah, doing Instagram and stuff, it'd be much easier if we were just talking to each other face to face. Okay, before I listen, if you look, I'm going to let people ask a couple questions if they have them. Sure, First of all, yeah. God bless you and thank you so much for what you do at, for the community and I love having you guys part of Northview and I give I give Freddie trouble all the time, but I really do love him. He's a good brother and 
fantastic. And it's lovely to have you guys as part wow. of our, our church community. Thank you. I am going to ask you, I am going to ask you a couple questions though about, about anatomy. All Don't right? do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, it's just going to be, a, just going to be a couple of them. All right. Okay. So uh, you're a new nurse. So here's, I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me where the soleus muscle is. Where the what? It, soleus, S-O-L-E-U-S. I'm gonna, uh, can I make a call to a friend, my friend Val Flockstra? No, you can't make an a call to friend. I, listen, if I'm, Come on. <laughs> if I'm coming into the, into the ER and I have a problem with my soleus, I don't want you to think that that's something it's not. What is okay. it? Okay, let me think. I would think the bottom of your foot. Oh my word, you're right. That uh. makes me angry. Well, that was yeah, a guess. Soul, it's actually not the soul. bottom of your foot. It's your calf. But you would be close enough that I would allow you. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> Melly, there's no question I'm looking that up. Are you kidding? I don't have a clue where these things are, but I'm not the nurse, am I? I'm a doctor. <laughs> I right. never, I, oh, flex on the haters. <laughs> okay, here, here we go. The sartorius muscle is located where? Did you look these up for a, a massage therapist website or a nurse no, website? No, I am looking right now at the skeletal muscles group. And <laughs> Val, I don't help, know a, help a girl out. Sartorius muscle. Where's the sartorius okay. muscle? Arm? No, it's in your leg. Okay, see, if I came in <laughs> and you'd be doing massage and working my arm and it wouldn't be there. It's uh, across your thigh. She, she says across it's your thigh. <laughs> see, she knows. That's that's where the muscle is. <laughs> I know it is. I'm looking at it now. It's kind of across. It's kind of across your thigh. So that makes that makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, I, I would I would do another muscle one, but I I don't I don't want to I don't want to anywhere anywhere. Yeah. Where what is by the way? Where is the spleen located? The spleen. I should actually know. Do this. you know what a but spleen is? Just... Do you, do you yes! know that we have the, the spleen is a thing inside the Hang human on. body? Left, left lower quadrant, left medium quadrant. I actually really should know this because I did know, I did actually study that, yeah. but I don't know it. Yeah, I have no, I, I have no idea. And I don't know why you can take the spleen out and then you're like, you're fine. Do you need, just like, you're like the appendix. You don't need that apparently. Okay, just take it. Well, it doesn't matter. you need to spleen or a bit consoles. more. You need to spleen a bit more than, but. <clears throat> Honestly. But see, there are probably lots of body parts that we could just not have. Don't you think? It might, it's, they're probably just extra bits inside there. Just kidding. Perhaps. Okay, if anybody has any questions for Becca, you should ask them now. We are, I'm very thankful that your Wi-Fi has kind of, kind of lasted. I'm actually tempted Ish. to give you a few dollars so you can Im improve your Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's all right. One day yeah. we'll move out of this basement suite. <laughs> Okay, uh, do you see? She says you don't need the gallbladder. <laughs> what else? <laughs> totally. Thank you, Graham. I think spleens are totally overrated. Uh, they are. It, you know that. Yeah. You can you can do without them. Yeah. By the way, have you ever? So, what's the worst thing that has happened? While we're waiting for questions, I'll ask you a question. What is the most bizarre thing that has happened in your two years in the ER? Um. Oh well. I don't know if they're Instagram, Instagrammable. I, there, I've seen some crazy trauma, so that's been bizarre. Um, uh, I we helped try to resuscitate a gentleman who um, was hit by a sky train. So oh. that was wild. Yeah. In, Chil in Chilliwack, he was hit with a sky train. No, that was when I was in RCH. Okay, I just... did a, cl a clinical there. Yeah, no sky trains in Chilliwack. So somebody asked if the, how it's going with the inmates from the mission institution. Yeah. Do you have much to do with that or? Yeah. We get email updates every day. What we know is that they're quarantining them really carefully. Um, we've also heard rumbles that they're, that they're releasing some people early on parole to avoid them getting the COVID. So that's um, bizarre and uh, odd, but I think sure. The low, I think, I, <laughs> I think that's like a low security, 
or medium secure. I think it's lower security prison. I think it so is low. Not, yeah. I don't think they're violent. It's not a violent criminal thing. A lot of times it's people who've, who've done what they call white collar crime and things like that. But it doesn't yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah. 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 So. yeah. OK, so nobody's asking any more questions. It's totally fine. Hey, I am super thankful for you. And thank you so much for being a part of this and being willing to do this, right? It's not easy to stick your face on the Instagram, especially with me and matching wits with me. Uh, I'm ah, a little troubled well, thanks, by your Jeff. lack of, skele of, your, of your muscle, skeletal muscle <laughs> uh, issues. Um, I can, but, hey, Jeff, you know, if your heart stopped, I'd know how to start it, though. So, I mean. I don't think my heart's been beating for years. At least that's what I've been. At least that's. I, at least that's what I've been told by by many people. By your wife, huh? Well, no, like, lots of people. Like they said, how how can you be a pastor without a heart? And I said, I don't, oh. I don't know, but I can. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Who knew? All right. Uh, Jen uh, said, "How's how's Freddie doing without being able to holy kiss anyone?" Yeah, I don't know. He, I think he's suffering. I bet it's funny is that he, he the one year that he decides that he's going to commit to to the holy kiss thing right uh that it, we get like a pandemic so no no 2019 was, was I, the year I, I, of the holy kiss jeff oh was it and so we're done oh. with the holy kiss now well no he still tried he still tried but really 2019 was the year it emerged so okay well yeah that's Good, good for him. That's great. Good info. Hey, God good bless info. You. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having okay. me on here. Take care. See you later, everybody. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye-bye.